Hey, I'm gonna show you a really easy bone broth recipe with simple ingredients and guaranteed results every time. And yes, I'm holding saw. So I taped this bone broth recipe before I was a carnivore about three weeks ago. So you will see those carrots and onions uh, and a few other things in, in the recipe, but I'm gonna edit this video so that we don't focus on that because now I'm focused on the carnivore and that's how I make my bone broth now and it's just as delicious. But if you're weaning yourself and you're taking that time to ease into the full carnivore diet, then start with the recipe so that you, you can have those vegetables in there because it's not a vegetable soup. These are just seasonings that go with your bones. And then as you're getting closer and closer to being full carnivore, then just go full bone broth. So I was using plant-based proteins, but I switched fully carnivore because I found I'm starting to run out of energy, that my workouts were becoming uh, really taxing. And now that I have gone fully carnivore, my energy levels are back and I'm, I'm losing weight and I'm, I'm just eating till I feel um, satiated. I've noticed that my mood has really lifted. Before I started the carnivore diet, which wasn't that long ago, I was experiencing a lot of anxiety and, and uh, I, I had suffered a bout of depression a few years ago. And I'm just finding right now that I'm on this eating program and let's not call it a diet. It's just a change in lifestyle. I just feel great. I feel positive. I feel motivated. And I should, I should add that I'm a thirsty carnivore. Okay. I know some people are carnivore and they don't drink any alcohol or if they do, they drink very little and it might only be vodka or red wine uh, on an odd Friday or whatever, but I've always had wine in the house or beer, but I don't really plan on giving those things up because I enjoy them. And, and so far I don't think I do it to, to excess and I'm getting results on carnivore, even though I drink alcohol, including beer. Hey, let's just make some bone broth. Now bone broth is super healthy because we're going to be using bones that have a lot of marrow and we're trying to extract the gelatin out of these bones. So I've got some chicken backs here and then I've got some uh, really nice big beef bones here. And the reason I have the saw is because these are actually pretty big. I'm going to try to cut these down and we're going to um, put these in the oven and we're going to roast them for a little bit before we put them in the pot here. So we're going to preheat the oven to 400 degrees and we're going to we're going to start by cooking uh, the, all the bones together for about 20 minutes. And then we're going to check on it. We're going to take the chicken bones out. And we're probably going to keep the beef bones in for another 10 minutes after that. Uh, you don't have to roast the bones. You can just put them in pot. I find that when I roast the bones, I'm getting better uh, flavors out of my broth. Uh, and uh, I just generally enjoy it a lot more. Uh, I've tried it both ways. I love putting it in the oven. Uh, it smells great. It looks great. And if it smells and looks great when it comes out of the oven, that's all going to go into your broth here. Well, here's another bonus too. Chicken backs are cheap. I've got here like uh, one, two, three, four, five chicken backs for $3.73. And then I've got a big uh, bag of beef marrow soup bones. These are going to be so good. They were ten seventy five, but look at this. They put them on sale. So I got those for five bucks. This happens all the time. And the nice thing is, if you find these on sale, you don't have to use it right away. Throw them in the freezer. Okay, so I got a freezer stocked right now with chicken backs. Whenever I see these on sale, I buy them and I throw them in my freezer. Quite often I'll do just uh, chicken backs and make just a chicken bone broth. Or I'll do just beef. And today I'm going to do both because sometimes I like to mix the flavors. If I have too much of beef and I have too much of chicken, I find that I'm craving something else. And when these mix together, they're, they're wonderful. When you do a bone broth, you can mix together all kinds of bones. Turkey bones, chicken bones, beef bones, pork bones, whatever, whatever you like. I use about a half a cup of apple cider vinegar. Apple cider vinegar has acid in it and you need the acids to pull the marrow and the gelatin, most importantly, out of these bones. You can use white vinegar. I really like the flavor profile of apple cider vinegar. Um, you can also just use lemon. Lemon has enough acids in it. The, the, the juice of this lemon in there is, is actually going to help draw it out as well. Again, a little different profile. Use what you prefer. Okay, so I'll put the chicken backs on the side for now. Um, now, I, all joking aside, I did clean this saw thoroughly. Sterilized it. It is a wood saw. It is what it is. When you go to the butcher, they're using similar similar items. They're just used for food, but I don't use this thing anymore. I've got power tools outside. So, look at this bone. I mean, look at this bone. This probably came out of the femur. I don't know if you can see this here, but it's just rich with marrow. 
and uh, we're going to take a stand at some roast right now. So I'm going to try to get this into four pieces so I can roast it and get the most out of it. So let's see what we got here. Oh, the other thing is, uh, this is not a cutting board I have here. This is just a, a nice scrap piece of hardwood that I have at in my workshop. Because when I'm sawing, I don't want to wreck my, my nice wood cutting board. All right. I've already cut into the board a little bit, so good thing I'm using this instead of the cutting board. And I'm not going to lie, that is way too much work. Okay, we're going to clean that. Now, if you go to the butcher, you can have them cut these bones for you. I didn't do it because there wasn't somebody there at the time. Frankly, I didn't want to bother anybody. I have a solution. Time to get the big guns out. All right, this is gonna go one of two ways. Let's see how this goes. Battery. I didn't put a battery on here. Ah, ah, ah. Okay, well, got a battery on here. Let's get this going. We're gonna use the slower speed. Well, I wish I'd thought of this earlier. Light butter. Oh, I don't know if you can see this. Inside this bone here, just look at this beautiful marrow in here. This is what we're looking for. But anyways, I am very safe with my tools. I've been using power tools forever. Famous last words, but let's get this last piece down here. Let's get to the edge here. Yeah, there you go. Look at it. Oh, look at that. Man, that looks good. Okay, those are perfectly cut. Let's get rid of this now. These bones are all cut up. I'll wash that after. Uh, you know what? I am super glad that I'm using this scrap piece of wood to cut these bones now. If my cutting board looked like this, I would be limited. Okay, so I've already put tin foil in my baking sheet, my baking pan for it. And we're going to turn this on to bake. We're going to do 400. Okay, and then we're going to put all these bones on here. I do keep all the meat on these as well, okay? There we go. This one's probably going to lie that way. Now, since, uh, since I'm doing uh, two different uh, bones, the chicken's probably going to cook faster, so I'm going to take that out first. But Putting all these chicken backs on here. I do like to put a sprinkle a little bit of salt on everything. I find what the salt helps to do is just draw some of the some of the marrow out and the flavor profiles, right? I do like to get salt on as, as much of the ends where the marrow is as possible. Now I use uh, my other hand since this one's dirty. There you go. All right, we'll put that in here. Well, I decided to come back in and check the chicken backs after only 15 minutes, so they actually look like they're getting really close. So I'm going to take those out right now and leave the beef in there for just a little bit longer. Yeah, those look great. Oh, just look at that color. This smells so good. Alright, I'm just going to take the chicken backs off now because they look really good. But I'll leave these beef bones in for probably another 10 minutes. Well, you can see here that the marrow is really starting to cook here inside the bones. Just looks so delicious. Oh, those are lovely. Oh, it smells so good. Honestly, um... I would just love to eat these right now. Uh, you can go to some restaurants where they'll serve beef bones like this, where the actual marrow is the meal and it's delicious. But we'll let these cool for a few minutes and we're going to get all this meat in there. We're also going to put in these drippings, okay? We're not going to waste any of this. Any of the natural fats and drippings that are coming out of these are going to go right back into the sunscreen pot. So, 
Okay, we'll start with our beef. I might not use all of this. Now, there are two schools to making bone broth. So you can make a really gelatinous bone broth. No matter what we're doing, we're still gonna make a, a, gel, a gelatinous bone broth because we want the gel. If you want it really gelatinous, you just wanna have the water just about two inches over top of your ingredients. Um, and, and if you don't care, then you can use fewer bones and you get more bang for your buck. Because sometimes, you know what, it adds up. You know, the cost adds up. And the idea here is, is that we do want to, we're doing this ourselves. First of all, it's nutritious. Second of all, we are trying to save money after all. At least I know I am. So, with all of these guys in here, and, you know, I think I will use it all because, uh, you know, this is going to work out pretty good. I want all these drippings that came out of the chicken in here, okay? We don't waste anything. At least we try not to. Okay, and the safety go. And then this pan now is good to good to touch, so I'm just gonna try to, to drip out as much of this as I can here, okay? And if I can get some of these chunks in here. Yeah, oh yeah, very, very nice. So that just get whatever I can, you know. A lot of really good stuff in here. It's not just this later, but these fats and uh, that came out of the bone marrow as well. Really nice stuff. Yeah. Oh. Now, peppercorns. So I just put a few in there. I'm not trying to, um, to make it spicy, but it just does add the right profile to this bone broth, um, whether it's chicken or beef. I got my apple cider vinegar. And I'm not going to use the lemon because I used the apple cider vinegar. And then again, I just sprinkle, I don't know, about, about a teaspoon of salt in there as well, okay? Again, the salt is a mineral. It's going to help draw the minerals out of our bones and the gelatin, which is really important. So, okay, so. I don't think that's uh, seated where we at. Just another little splash here. Okay, we're good. Shut that up to the two thirds. Now we're gonna put this in and cook it. Mm. Right, we've got this filled up with cold water. Another note I wanted to make is something that a, um, a plumber once told me is, I, I know it might make things go faster if you just filled it with hot water out of the tap, but your hot water tank is full of a lot of minerals and chemicals and things that, you know, they're supposed to be clean, but they're not really meant for drinking water. If you want to use hot water, just boil some cold water because any cold water that comes to your tap is going to be much cleaner and fresher than what comes out of your hot water tank. Kind of makes sense, but I'd never thought about it before. Yeah. It goes on. Let's see if I can do this. I used to stand up here, dude. So, a little awkward doing it this way. Oh, there we go. Okay. We've got the, the little toggle here set to uh, seal, okay? Now what I do here is I've got a soup broth function. You can program this um, so it remembers that I have it for two hours and that I'm at high pressure and I'm just going to let it go. Okay, well, I'm going to come back in about two and a half hours. I like to do the extra 30 minutes because it gives this time to self-vent. And uh, in the meantime, I'm going to go back uh, to my home office and work. Oh, and to bring my power tools back after I clean them. <laughs> Here we are a couple of uh, hours later. I did let this uh, cool off for about 40 minutes or so. Looks like I have no steam left inside, so it's safe to open up. Let's check it out. Oh, look at that. Wow. Mm. That smells delicious. So you can already see the beautiful color in there. There's some of the chicken bones. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to remove these beef bones. I'm gonna try to show you that, I don't know if you can see that or not. It's gonna be hot, but that's okay. Look at that. That is empty. All the marrow, all the gelatin has come out of there. Also out of the bones. So let's get those bones out of here and I'll show you why. Yeah, make sure any marrow that's still in there drops out. Oh, beautiful. 
Okay, keep going here. Oh boy, that's a nice one. This is still pretty hot, mind you. Yep, and that marrow is just falling right out of there. Oh, it's beautiful. So the chicken backs have been cooked at high pressure for two hours. Uh, they're really soft, and not everybody does this, but I do this. Sure. I like to take my um, my masher. Uh, I have this one that has a star on it. It's not like a regular potato masher, but I go in here and I, I try to mash up those bones because what's going to happen is any of the nutrients that are inside of those chicken bones, they're just going to break up in really fine pieces. That feels pretty good. And all the marrow that was left inside will come out and go into my soup base. Strainer, it's a pretty fine strainer, but it's not crazy. I don't, I don't hyper hyper strain this out. Just enough to get all the big chunks out. So I'll move these bones for now. And the edge of this should be fine. I, this, this pot can get pretty hot. Uh, especially if you grab it lower down, but at the top it's pretty good. I'm still gonna be on the safe side and put on some oven mitts here. And we're gonna strain this out. We'll let this cool a little more after we strain it, but you'll get to see what this broth looks like anyway. I get closer so it'll splash all over the place. There you go. Oh, there's lots of meat in the bottom there. I'm gonna get everything out of here. Uh, it is. And this was still pretty hot. Get that all out of there. There we go. Okay, I want to get this guy cleaned out because now I'm gonna I'm gonna put the strainer in this pot and get any extra drippings I can out of this. So let's give that a little rinse. We just want to rinse that to get the any of the leftover bones and stuff that might be in the bottom. I'm just going to put this on here. Okay, and wow, just look at this. Look at the beautiful. This is going to taste so good. It's, it's crazy. So, and then what I'm going to do is I just take, um, I have to move this over for a second here. All right. I'll take um, this pile here and I'll just squeeze down on it. It's nice to have a fairly heavy strainer because then you can actually just squeeze, squeeze more and more of the juice out. Yeah, and the more I compress it, the smaller this pile is getting because all this moisture is coming out of all this beautiful broth. Oh, it looks like I still had one bone in there. Okay. And I think this is looking good. That should be just fine. Oh yeah. And you'll see that actually still some pretty good drippings coming out of the bottom here. Let's keep pushing here. And as you'll see, I still have, look at all that beautiful broth that came out, the bone broth, full of nutrients, waste not, want not, correct? Okay, so that's looking good. I'll put this off to the side for now. And speaking of using everything we have, we do have a use for all that leftover material, which is delicious. Okay, so we're gonna let this soup cool. We are gonna put uh, this into some containers. I use these uh, Tupperware containers. I have a number of them. Actually, I have a whole bunch of these ones, except they're in my freezer full right now with broth, uh, bone broth that I made earlier. And, and I, of course, when I did this for the video, uh, I'm making more than I need. But the great thing is, is I'll freeze this. This will stay in your fridge uh, fresh for about three days or so, maybe a little longer, but I wouldn't push it. Uh, and then you can put it in the freezer. And what I do is I just keep rotating up. You know, as soon as I start using the broth I have in the fridge, I go up in the freezer and get one and start letting it thaw in the fridge. And usually that'll take uh, up overnight and then I've got brought the next day. So um, you can always, uh, you know, warm it up or do whatever if it's still frozen. But generally speaking, I like to let it thaw on its own and use it like that. So uh, in the meantime, we are going to try just a little sip of this. I'll show you what the color looks like. Maybe I don't need that much. Oh boy, look at that. Now this is going to, I can already tell this is going to gel up nicely. Let's check out the flavor. We don't have any added extra ingredients in there. We'll give that a try. Mm. Oh man, I love that. The chicken and the beef together make for a really nice bone broth. 
Okay, so we're going to let this cool in the pot for just a little bit because I don't like to put scalding hot um, soup or anything in the Tupperware because it tends to kind of warp the container or just or, or bite into it. So let it cool for a bit. Then we'll put it in here. We'll put it in the fridge and I will show you the final gelled product. Okay, so this is cooled a little bit. I'm going to start uh, filling these containers. I like to use Tupperware. I know a lot of people use glass mason jars and, and things like that, but because I'm freezing it, I like to use Tupperware. Um, I don't fill it to the top. I try to leave just enough room at the top so that when it freezes, that it can expand and not crack the container. So far, so good. I'll just put this in the fridge without the lid on for now. And we'll do the rest of these, and I'll show you what they look like after they've cooled. All right, so what you're going to notice is that we've got three fairly distinct layers. We've got our top fat layer, which is a mix of fat and gelatin. It's really tasty. It's really creamy and beautiful to cook with. Then we have our bone broth, and then at the bottom we've just got sediment. I like to cook that all together when I cook it up. I believe that this, this bone broth as a whole, everything in here is what I want at every meal. Some people do skim the fat off, but I don't. I use the fat every time. And when you mix it all together, I believe you're getting the most benefit. All right, well, let's get the lid off and have a look. Oh, wow, look at that. That is dreamy. This fat on the top is super creamy and velvety. If you get it on your hands, they don't feel greasy. They, they actually just feel super smooth and velvety. And you'll see that it's fairly hard, but it's pretty soft. And I just tap through it like a layer of ice when you go ice fishing. And we've got our, our bone broth below. Now this is fairly gelatinous actually. When you're using chicken backs, it doesn't get as gelatinous. You wanna use more joints and things, but we can, we can do another video on that. Yeah, this has got a beautiful consistency, so nice. Hi Maggie, have you met Maggie yet? She's my very patient assistant. And you can see her looking longingly up at that counter. Hey, okay. You know, learn my dirty little secret. Um, once my uh, father-in-law, uh, he used to rinse his, his pans and things right into the drain. And he had to get a plumber to come out. And like, because he had so much fat that it eventually collected his pipes. It, it was a nightmare. So I don't like to dump any fat down the sink. I'll either wipe it all out before I wash. Or um, I've got some nice drippings here that this good little girl, she's going to help me clean up. Thanks, Maggie. Hey, thanks for watching this video. Remember to like and subscribe. And by all means, leave comments in the comment section below. I, I do read all of them and I will respond to all of them. I could use any advice or tips you have or take any questions. Uh, let me know if the video is too long, too short, if you'd like to see more or less. If the format works, whatever. I'm, I'm growing the channel and, and I really depend on you to let me know if, if I'm doing the right thing here. Oh, I almost forgot to tell you. What I did with all the, the meat and the bones and everything that was strained through the strainer, I give that to my dogs. I mean, if it's good enough for us, it's definitely good enough for them. Because after all, we're all carnivores.